All right, let's talk turkey. If you're thinking of planning a trip to Turkey and you don't know where to start, Gokche and I, we're kind of experts on the subject. She's grown up here and this is like my 10th time visiting. So we're gonna give you the 10 things you must know before coming to Turkey to make sure that your trip is as enjoyable as possible. We were actually going to air out our next video about the Ephesus, but since we received a lot of questions after our latest video about coronavirus in Turkey, we decided to jump in and answer all those questions. So let's get started with everything you need to know before you arrive to Turkey. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to know about it is gonna be the currency. Turkey uses the Turkish Lira, and currently it's about eight Liras for one US dollar, a little over nine Liras for one Euro. We actually approach it by taking money out of any ATM here in Turkey. They charge about a 5% fee for the amount of money that you take out, but our bank refunds us in the US, Charles Schwab. So if you could find a bank just like that, it's invaluable. And if not, we recommend going into a bank and getting an exchange there. It's gonna be easier and less of a hassle than the currency exchanges. And the plugs are actually same as Euro. So before you take off, maybe you can buy one on Amazon or when you get here, you are sure that you will be able to find a converter for as little as a couple dollars or so. And as far as cell phone service is concerned, you could buy a SIM card while you're here from a company like Turkcell. It's about 150 Liras and it's good for up to 30 days. You get 20 gigabytes worth of data and 200 minutes of talking and all of your messaging through WhatsApp and similar apps like it are completely for free. We actually use Google Fi though from America and we definitely recommend it to everybody else because you are able to go to over 170 countries just like Turkey. And in terms of the most important and most frequently question that we always receive is the safety of Turkey. I'm not going to answer this question as a Turkish person because I don't want to be biased. So I'm just going to leave it up to you. I guess I'm slightly less biased as I've mostly come to Turkey as a visitor, quote unquote. But I've even brought my parents here and they felt safe the entire time. Be aware of your surroundings and just be smart while you're traveling and you should have no issues whatsoever visiting Turkey. If you're feeling safe about going to New York, Paris and other big cities in the world it is the same thing here there are good neighborhoods bad neighborhoods i think the next question i'm going to handle as well because people are curious about if they need a visa to arrive in Turkey or not. As an American, you do. You gotta pay 50 US dollars, you have a visa for 180 days, and within that 180 day period, you could stay in Turkey for up to 90 days. Some European countries, as well as some other countries, actually are now being integrated into this visa-free program for the same 90 day and 180 day period. We're gonna link the Foreign Ministry of Turkey link down below in the description, so that way you could check out your own country. And of course, they offer e-visas so you could go on to a website which will also link in the description below and get that taken care of before you even land. You can also obtain your visa once you arrive here. It will be slightly more expensive but it will be still easy and you should not have any problem. Another frequently asked question is about the weather. People assume that it is actually summer like all year round in Turkey but it's not the case. Turkey goes through four seasons. The south of Turkey doesn't feel the winter as much as Istanbul but Istanbul has every season so you need to dress accordingly if I can convince Steve this winter I'm planning to take him to the ski resorts in Turkey I'm not a skier but we'll see about that the other big thing to keep in mind for visiting Turkey is probably to bring a comfortable pair of shoes if you are coming to Turkey that's actually must have a lot of ancient sites and sightseeing and places that you would like to visit in Turkey have hillsides so it's gonna get very hilly you have to wear comfortable shoes otherwise you won't be able to get around much. Even Istanbul is known as Seven Hills City. There are seven hills here. There's gonna be always walking up and down. The next question is how easy is it to get around and communicate here in Turkey? Unfortunately, we have to say there definitely can be a language barrier at a lot of points. From the very moment when you get to the airport, you're gonna be witnessing the situation where there are not many English speakers around. Once you actually try and put the effort, they will appreciate it and be more welcoming. Even if I didn't have Gokçe, you know, the opportunity to learn a few words in Turkish before you get here puts a smile on people's faces and I don't want you to think that the language barrier is going to stop you from enjoying your time here. Turkish people by and large are just incredibly friendly and will go out of their way to try to help you even if they can't fully understand you. So unfortunately, until April 2021, there's no metro connection. So you may have to be looking into exploring different options of transportation like Hava or Kaps. From the airport, Ahava is to 
Temple event, the main business district, or Sultan Ahmed, the old town. It's gonna run you about 30 liras. So if your two people are less, definitely look into taking the Hava Is bus. It's gonna be more economical. If you're a larger group, look into a taxi cab. Of course, with the yellow cabs, you're gonna run into that same situation we were just talking about before. A lot of the yellow taxi drivers, unfortunately, can't speak English well. And if you're not familiar with Istanbul at all for the first time, just like New York City, unfortunately, you may face drivers who are willing to kind of drive around a little bit. So just be prepared for that. If you prefer to take a private transfer, you can as well. Those will just run you from 30 to 35 or even over 40 euros. But of course, the convenience of knowing that there's gonna be a driver waiting for you might be worthwhile. There is, of course, an application. It's not Uber but Turkey has their own. Yeah, it is called Bitaxi. You may actually see the advertising even at the airport. In order to use the Bitaxi application, which is very similar to Uber, you have to have a Turkish phone number. So once you land to a Turkish airport, you can obtain a new Turkish phone number. It works exactly the same as Uber. You can either pay cash or credit card. This helps you not to have to communicate with your cab driver. Now that you have gotten your transportation down pat from Istanbul airport, the next thing you're gonna be thinking about is where the heck do I stay? Now, of course, if you're coming to Istanbul for the first time, you're gonna wanna stay in Old Town, Sultan Ahmed area. So we're gonna recommend like two to three days there maximum. You definitely can see all the sights in one day. Gokshe and I <laughs> tried, tried to do more. this. Yeah, and it's just, it's way too much. And then you can explore more of Istanbul. And I'm gonna let Gokshe give you some ideas where because she lived here, I didn't. You can actually stay in the Asian side. Like there is Kadıköy, Moda, and Jatte Bostan area, which are very safe and really nice neighborhoods that we highly suggest you to stay. And on the European side of Istanbul, you can explore options around Harbiye, Şantaşı, Etiler, Levant area, because it's very central. The metro line goes everywhere. And also you can see the much modern face of Istanbul compared to the old town. You really could spend like a week here or more and it's just such a huge city and there's so much to do and see now that you know exactly where to stay how do you get around in Istanbul and for us the simple answer is the metro system Istanbul Central has an amazingly built out metro system and that all starts with the Istanbul cart and it's a flat fee 350 Turkish liras within the main city area you could also use it to take buses metro buses, ferries, and a few other things as well. And it's all tap to pay. And some of those things, of course, are gonna cost more money. We highly suggest you to take the ferries as much as possible. The sceneries are amazing. And if you don't do Asian Europe side ferry at least once, you're not feeling the experience in Istanbul. You never get tired of that view. So if you're looking for places to visit outside of Istanbul, you wanna stay for a longer period of time. The obvious ones, of course, are Antalya in the south, which like Gokçe mentioned, stays a bit warmer during even the winter months. And they have those all-inclusive resorts where you can stay on the property and have your fill of uh, everything, really. And elsewhere, you're looking at natural history and beauty of Cappadocia, Pamukkale, Ephesus. Those are some of the beautiful historical sites in Turkey that I highly recommend to visit. But of course, if you want to see more of the local side of Turkey, Gokçe and I could recommend some of those places as well. And of course, we have some videos on the local spots coming up. So let's talk about getting out of Istanbul. We definitely recommend flying to most places. A lot of the domestic flights are on the inexpensive side so it's going to be a bit easier than taking a bus which can take an extremely long time especially during covid times you really don't want to be stuck on a bus for 11 12 hours if you want to take a bus the buses in turkey are just like flights actually not the speed wise but the quality wise you won't have a bathroom on the bus but at the same time you will have someone to serve you tea coffee and some snacks and they are very clean they mostly have have their own TV system behind the seats so you will feel very comfortable and also the service is really good if you have to take the bus don't hesitate they make stops for bathroom and other needs during the way as yeah. well and you even get ice cream which I loved I know <laughs> it's way better than taking a bus in the US mm -hmm. definitely recommend it if it's three to four hours but for example Istanbul to Cappadocia is 12 hours and you know finally of course you could also rent a car while you're here the national chains are here like Avis budget all those we've rented from uh, an agency called Central Car and they have a lot of English speakers and they're a national Turkish chain but just some things to keep in mind when you're driving in Turkey look out for really small signs on the side of the road they're gonna be your speed signs they're also gonna say things like EDS which is going to be the speed detector signs uh, Turkey radar enforces 
everywhere really so try your best to stick within the speed limit if you're going to be renting a car you could find a rental car especially during non-busy times for as little as 150 liters a day but gas and tolls could be on the more expensive side. We would suggest you to stick to the bigger car rental companies because you may not know the procedures of the local companies. So last but not least, at this point, the Turkish food. I love it. I can't say anything bad about Turkish food. Just be open to have different kind of tastes and don't get stuck with the eating kebab and baklava. Please try to explore more stuff, try stuffed mussels, try cockroach, the lamb intestines, try different things. Do not limit yourself with it, just only a few options. Every city has their own food, every place has their own special dishes, so don't hold yourself back. But definitely bring your appetite and a size or two larger pants with you because you're gonna be gaining a lot of weight. Yeah, at this point I've tried a whole host of different things, even drinks. Iron, I loved it. Shell gum suyu, carrot juice. Not so much for me, but try them. Just You'll try them all. <laughs> you won't regret it. I love Turkish food and I can't highly recommend it enough. So now just a quick bonus. If you're a remote worker or a content creator and you were thinking of coming to Turkey, one thing to keep in mind is the Wi-Fi situation. Wi-Fi is not very strong all over the country. You will find Wi-Fi, but it won't be working as fast and strong as in the big cities. So for example, when we were traveling around the southern part of Turkey, we had a little bit of uh, hiccups, but it still worked out. Uh, so just wanted to let you know that you may get frustrated at times uh, but in Istanbul we don't anticipate you to have any issues. And finally if you're thinking of bringing a drone here to Turkey it's 500 gram rule. Anything above 500 grams you have to register with the Turkish government in order to get a permission to fly. Anything below 500 grams like the original Mavic Air, Mavic Mini, things like that you don't have to get permission you can just fly them but be careful where you fly them. There's a lot of no flying signs especially in ancient cities and historical places to keep in mind because the fine is up to 9,000 liras and we've seen somebody get their drone confiscated and fined before so I don't the bus. yes glad we didn't fly before him hope you enjoy the 10 things you have to know before you come to turkey but if you still have more questions let us know in the comment section below happy to answer them and don't forget to subscribe to our channel because we have more of turkey coming out soon we just completed our travels around the southern part of turkey and we can't wait to share them all with you so see you in the rest of turkey see ya